What do you want to see here coming into this series? I'm going to make a bold statement. I think whoever takes red side is probably just going to win the game outright. And the reason I'm saying that is this top lane is highly volatile. And it's the reason all you guys are coming in to watch this series because it will be breathe against the shy. So whoever gets the counter pick, I think has a huge advantage and will likely run away with the game. Well, it looks like the counter pick did come in for the side of IG. They first picked the, uh, sorry, set, last picked the NAR after the Orn was picked up for the side of WE. And then the bot lane, strangely enough, actually, we see the 80 carries picked last. But huh. nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and jump into game as quick as we possibly can, get you straight to the action. And the Lilia has been a very powerful pick in the side of the LPL, and I want to see how they use it on the side of IG as we jump into the first game. Right now, Lilia is in a weird position of amazing team fight. If you can get off those big AoEs, we're going to have a quick listen to the Gyos and we'll jump into the game. Always, always great. Two of the oldest organizations in the business. Team WE on the blue side with IG on the red. Have a quick look down at the runes and nothing really too untoward right now. Love seeing the Tristana here for Jomong. Definitely something that could pop off given the right circumstances. There are some interesting choices being taken in the summoners right here. We do see Wink actually going to go for the exhaust. So a very powerful kill lane on the bottom side for IG with that kill combination between Kai'Sa and the Leona. Get really easy sunlight procs and you have double offensive summoners for that. So I like the idea on Jomong as well, as you, we can see him actually going to go for the cleanse just to keep himself a little bit safe. He is the three item AD carry. And another thing I want to point out is pretty unorthodox from Shun. He's not going to be taking the phase rush to catch up on ganks. He's actually just going to snowball them going for the uh, Dark Harvest right here. Going for that Dark Harvest, seeing if he can stack up as much damage as he possibly can. and. Something that's been of a question mark at best, I suppose, has been the bot lane of IG. Baolan and Wink being the starting duo. And Baolan hasn't really had any really luck at all trying to get his team going. We've seen him go in a little bit early, too late by himself. It's kind of hindered a lot of what IG wants to do. Yes, they have the Shy. Yes, they have Rookie. And I got to admit, Shun has looked pretty damn decent on Nidalee in particular. But... I feel like the, the, the crux of what's going wrong with IG has to be in this bot lane. It's a bit baffling. I honestly didn't expect Balan to be able to keep the starting position this long. Mechanically, I don't think he's actually improved much. He's still pretty much the same player. Uh, but we do have to say that IG historically throughout 2018 till now has been the most successful with Balan. Just because Balan is willing to throw himself with no regard for self-preservation at the enemy. And the rest of the team has been able to, just because they're such great mechanical players, have been able to take great advantage out of that. Oh, well, breathe in a little bit of trouble here from the Shy. He's able to just chase him down. Has to flash away from the boomerang to get rid of those triple auto attack procs. And that is advantage to the Shy in the top side. And this is what we want to be seeing from IG. Aggressive control in the lanes, giving themselves advantages and opening up Shun to maybe make something That NAR happen. buff definitely coming in big right there. You do get the extra time onto the attack speed on your hop. And if you hop into Mega NAR, that will continue through your Mega NAR phase. So you're dealing massive amounts of extra AD and extra attack speed to force out the flash in the top lane. Well done by the Shy. Oh, Shank still gets caught out by that little, little ball on the ground. That is first blood going to Rookie, and this is what IG do best. Lanes that dominate, solo laners that absolutely punish any misstep, and this is the perfect start for IG. Even with the flash, Shanks isn't able to survive that one. Very surprised about the kill happening there, and uh, just well done by Shun and Rookie. You know, catching out with Scatter the Weak and able to follow up on Lilia. Just very easy kill right there and able to start stack up this Dark Harvest. 
I love the commitment from Shun as well, just re recognizing that they got the stun, the flash had already been used by Shanks. If he just fully commits to this, they can get the kill. It wasn't a, oh, maybe, oh, we'll take our wins. And that is the difference between some of the, you know, a good team and a great team, is that not only are you getting an advantage, you're capitalizing to the fullest on top of that advantage. I do want to see how Shun works out in these team fights. Typically, we do see phase rush being a must for Lilia because you do want to keep your prance stacks up all the time. And it's much easier to keep those prance stacks up if you're actually landing Qs. Um, with the Dark Harvest, she's not really going to be that mobile in team fights, but she will pack a punch. So what this means is uh, her play style is going to be more about following up on the crowd control of someone like Rookie, of someone like Baolan, and just trying to get the instant kill. For Team WE, they need this Tristana to do well, I feel. They need this combination of Alistair Tristana. Alistair to go in with Missing. And Missing, honestly, Missing's had such an amazing time so far in this meta. Alistair being meta is his champion. He would pick it even when it was considered really bad and not something he'd want to be picking into the, the bot lane. And he'd still look good on it. So right now, it's his time to shine. And it overall comes down to how he wants to play this bot lane and how they are going to try and keep Jomong from, let's call a spade a spade, from Jomon from inting as you know, hard as he possibly can. Oh, welcome Shanks to the rookie test. Can you actually uh, establish yourself as a above average mid laner? Y you can tell once you face rookie. But Beixiang is gonna have a good angle onto Shun. He, I, I think they actually missed each other completely right there. Just a pretty interesting spider sense. Shun just caught him. Yeah, I think Shun just caught him and Beixiang also backing away. Dragon will be started. And overall, feel like IG are just feeling a little bit stronger right now. And they have the pressure in mid, they have the pressure in bot, the jungler just forced the other jungler out. IG, this is a free dragon for you. This is a pretty classical IG red side draft. They do have counter picks in both of these solo lanes. So they can play towards the top side very well. And in typical IG fashion, they want to play through all three lanes. So their bottom lane is a kill lane instead of a defensive lane. Very, uh, very 2018-esque. Shun is going to go in and they're going to find something. They are going to find Missing, who is unable to flash away, and IG finding another advantage around the map. That's top, mid, and jung, or sorry, bot, all finding their own little advantages, which means that this game becomes a hell of a lot harder for Team WE. Can you see another trade into the top side? The Shy getting a huge chunk out of Breathe once more. And this is pretty interesting because in most other regions, people have been pretty disparaging to the NAR pick. We have seen uh, Doran have a terrible game to start it. LCS not really favoring the NAR. But here in the LPL, he really is king. We have a lot of OG NAR players like the Shy, like Zoom, who actually learned it off the Shy, and like Longxing, who really loves this pick. And I think Breathe is a little bit overextended without that flash here. Oh, Breathe, no flash available to you. Since you are almost certainly going to fall, they will try and give this one over to the Shy, but Shun says, I'm getting a little low here, buddy. I gotta claim this one for myself. Nice and easy, quick kill. 2,000 gold at the eight minute mark or just below it. CS differentials in the top lane, kills across the board. This is starting to look a bit dicey. The IG snowball that we all know, that we all fear, is starting to happen. The terrifying thing here is all three IG lanes have an insanely high amount of kill threat. So W is walking into this one with the same mindset they had in the previous series. We're going to play around Jomong. We're going to play hyper carry. But IG are going to end this game in the laning phase. Like, it's so easy for Shun to actually stack up Dark Harvest. And we have to keep attention on how many stacks he already has. Uh, Beishang forced to flash away, starting up a Rift Herald that you have no reason starting. Rookie trying to play keep away here from Shanks, forced to flash oh. away, nicely done, missing! What was that, my dude? That is not the play you need to be doing. Knocks Rookie to safety, they get themselves a kill, now Jomong forced to flash as a wink did end up jumping in with the killer instinct. Breathe, using his flash off of cooldown. Shun trying to follow up. He just needs to get one with the lilting lullaby. We'll get it down. Can they get any more damage? No, it's too, too risky. But Team WE, they're on the ropes and we're not even 10 minutes into this WE game. WE are the ones that roam in first. They have their bottom lane in position before everyone else. 
but they just failed the execution so terribly right there. Missing actually saving Rookie's life, isn't able to complete the WQ combo, and he just goes down without a fight. So, Harold over to IG, they pick up an extra wave in the bot side too, and this is just looking like a very quick snowball game. This really reminds me of 2018. The motto for 2018 IG was we never do overtime. We're getting out of this arena 2-0. We still have dinner reservations somewhere in Shanghai, so we got to attend to that one. I'm sorry, boys, but we're out of here. We can see this here. Rookie playing fantastically just around Shanks and then missing. He goes for it, but then it just doesn't oh, really combo it properly. Yeah, he misplays that quite terribly actually uses the Q before the W and good on Rookie too to get the phase rush procs uh, before ducking into the river brush walks away with everything IG just outskilling this is the most terrifying thing about IG if you allow them red side drafts and you show your solo lanes too early like W probably did here uh, they're just gonna walk all over you they they know how to play around a three lane draft very well you can't give two counter picks to IG when you're in a, when they're on red side. They picked the Orn early, which meant that the Nar could be picked locked in before third round of rotations. Missing, seeing if he can go for something here. Shockwave does land. You know, Scattered the Weak does land as well, though. And Shanks will eventually take down Rookie, but ooh, missing just a little early on the Unbreakable Will. He's being whittled down with that extra HP percent true damage. Double kill is going to be secured here by the side of IG. Beishong and Breathe, trying to see if they can take down the Shy. The Shy is still very tanky in his Meganar. We'll go back down into Mini and will be taken down. So, life from Team WE. They're not just rolling over and letting IG dictate everything to them. And huge kill in the top lane does put a lot of pressure off of Breathe. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Shanks is just not having a good time right here. This is our, our biggest worry into into this season for WE is how good is their mid laner? How much of an improvement is Shanks over Teacher Ma if Shanks actually sat the bench the entire time behind Teacher Ma? He was on the roster, he just wasn't active. And I think we're getting a clearer look with every passing series that the way they draft with Shanks, how defensive they play around him, probably leads us to believe that he's not really that mid lane, uh, laning phase answer that we kind of wanted for WE. I, I'm not putting too much blame on him because he is going up against Rookie and that's just kind of normal. He did find the kill anyway, but this is just all collapsing on all sides for WE. They're having this front to back team fight, but they haven't been in a 5v5 yet. And for Team WE, this is the the issues we spoke about, you know, in, in so many different matchups and so many different kind of power rankings or discussions about this team is that Yes, Breathe is a fantastic top laner. Beishong looks like a top tier jungler and you've got Missing and Jomong who on their best day look great. The big thing for us was Shanks. Yes, he's an improvement to Teacher Mob, but he's just not of the same caliber of some of the top, top teams. The Knights, the Rookies, these guys who will just come in and, and, and hell, I wouldn't even put Scout in top of that as well, along with Mole. So you're not even really in the top five. And that's when your team can really start to hinder yourself because you just can't come up to these guys. You can't step on the same platform as them. Yep, and that's going to be another huge worry for W. Pretty much the only reason they weren't able to win their playoff series against LGD was because they were bullied so much in the mid lane where Beishan couldn't have an impact on the map against Xi and Peanut. So it looks like it's gonna be a very similar storyline for W this split. And IG, I feel like they're just putting some finishing touches on this early game. I hate to call it so early, it's only 13 minutes into the game, but when this mid lane tower goes down and when you have Kaisa and Leona roaming around the map, it, it, you're never gonna find the time for Joe Monk to actually hit three items. He's never gonna complete his infinity edge. And uh, yeah, this is just a, it's just kind of a sad state of affairs for WE, but they have to get something going right now or IG are just gonna walk away from them. I like this idea though. You can always bank on the Shy giving you some help. Yep, the Shy will always be that little bit overextended. Flashes into the Ornhorn and will be taken down. Beishan gets that one there. And the TP was stopped by Shanks on the Oriana. Nicely done there by Team WE. They are not dead yet. Still only a 2,000 gold lead. And IG are gifting them some advantages. That's just typical the Shy. They're winning out on the bot lane. They just took a uh, they just took a lot of this river control. But the Shy says, I need to play aggressive at all times. 
I, I actually had a very funny quote from um, the Shy during Worlds when he was on the LCK analyst desk. He defended himself by saying that I have to play super aggressive the entire time just to take pressure off my bot lane because my bot lane is weak. <laughs> it was such a good quote from the Shy and just such a. It's such a backhanded compliment <laughs> as well. It's just like, oh, I have to do it this. Why? Because my bot lane sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Don't throw your players under the bus that quickly. It's kind you know? of I get, true, I get it. You got to sure play aggressive. You have to play it that is way a little bit. Just because of your bot lane. <laughs> I mean, it's true, but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> hey, the shy is definitely not someone that we'll cares about team atmosphere, but he is still very much in the lead. And I still favor IG's chances in this one. I do want to touch on Lilia's itemization right here. I was asking, how is she going to keep her movement speed up to keep her prance stacks up during the team fights? Well, now we have the answer. She's not going to be going for the Leandri's Anguish that we've seen or the Moonstone Renewer that we typically see out of Lilia's. Um, she is going to be going for the, um, the Night Harvester instead. So... Both harvesters collected right here is going to help her keep her move speed up to chase up the targets in team fights. Link needs to be a little bit careful. Missing can just dive under there. We did see the ball from Shun being thrown out as the Lilia just making her presence known. Gale Force has been picked up by the Graves as well as the Kraken Slayer for the Tristana. So Jomong building towards we see the hyper carry burn your health bar uh, ad carry that we know the trisana can be but with a three zero zero wink it's gonna be a long long time like you said until that tristana becomes in any way relevant so we'll wait and see how they want to try and take this one team we trying their very very best just to stem the bleeding and in all fairness i gotta give them credit they have stopped the snowball to a relevant you know kind of extent they are still only 2000 gold behind the gold lead has not extended and they've been able to tr you know trade off a couple of objectives i've got some bad news for you we at this point they still cannot team fight they're missing a lot of mythics here we see Shanks still... Okay, he finally does get his Tempest out. And they are going to try and establish early vision to try and rush this Drake down. But at this point, if I'm IG, I'm still pretty willing to contest these team fights. I do have a huge lead on Wink. So as long as Wink doesn't die first by one of these Wombo combos, I think IG rushes in and gives him the 5v5. See if they want to go for it. TP is going to be committed by the NAR. The Soda Flare goes in. The Flash available as well as they've separated this fight. It's a 3v3 almost on either side. You can see they're trading it off. So Lilia down for the Orianna. Can Ooh. they get Jomon going though? He's hopping. He's trying to get the resets. He finally does get one, but he's too low to keep going. It's two for two. The health bars, however, are very much in favor of Team IG. Night, Team WE backing themselves away. The Shy just still pushing forward. Going to take a little bit of harassment back. Needs to be very, very careful. But with no mid lane turret for Team WE, they have to back away. Both Jungler and the support. Or sorry, it's Jungler and the AD carry down for IG. But it does not matter because they have Rookie and he is full health, full mana. Just too much of an HP advantage onto IG. I think we are going to get a replay of that. So I will walk over some of the crucial moments. The initial CC from IG didn't really work out. And... It's always a really good move from uh, from players on the blue side where they retreat into their ramp. If you go off the ramp, you know, the, the, the players on the bottom side are not going to have vision. It's going to be very hard to follow up onto that. And that was actually pretty good on WE's backline to retreat up there, make sure they're able to trade away the carries. But at the end of the day, IG, like we were talking about, their soul lanes had the counter pick. They were just way too fed in that situation. Still able to snowball the objective into Dragon Soul Point. And that's the big thing. Yes, it was an even trade overall. It is still only a two and a half thousand gold lead for IG, but you're looking at it as they are one dragon away from a soul. That will be a 23 minute soul point for the side of IG. At Team WE, you have to fight at the next dragon and you have to win. There's no more you fight, trade, and it's all equal, you know, even Stevens. But let's have a look at how this kind of fight. It was a fight on two yeah, fronts. Yeah, does miss his ultimate, but does find the E onto the back line, and a Wink does follow in. And because of the, they retreated up the ramp, Breathe was actually in a perfect position to kind of cut off the damage coming in from the Kai'Sa. However, with all that being said, the, f the front line, the soul lanes from IG, like you're always telling about, Rookie and the Shy, the Old Faithful, you, you just can't beat them at this point. They're too far ahead in their own lanes, and even though they do get winked pretty early on into the team fight, still can't take it. For IG, you just gotta wait now. Three and a half minutes, or just a little bit over for them to wait for that Infernal Soul. You've got yourselves a lot of different items being picked up as well. 
for IG, this is just strong. It's a strong setup. It's a strong, you know, matchup for them to really wait for the, the, the cards to just fall into their lap. They don't really need to force anything. And as I say that, they're forcing something because you know what? Why not? It's they IG. They should at this point because they got a huge summoner advantage over WE in that last team fight. If you look at the likes of Shanks and Jomong, they have nothing on them right now. Why the Shy and Rookie, they can both flash in and just snipe off targets. So WE, even with their front line, they can't really defend their jungle. The, uh, the burst coming in from IG, they can flash over that front line. Oh, we're gonna see a bit of an engage coming in here now. The Ornhorn goes down. They're gonna try and lock up Baolan, who gets himself caught. He's ticking down. He will fall and is missing. It picks that one up with the Ignite. Asleep. Now with the Sleep coming down on top of the tanks. Oh, there's a Shockwave, but it just about misses. Missing, trying to get himself away. How do Missing and Breed stay alive? And again, IG over aggression does end up being punished. They I, I think that, yes, you're right. They could have gotten a pick. I don't think they needed to be in the jungle right I there. I think that actually works out for them. And this is the magic of IG macro. If Balan dies and you get a tower, did you really lose? Did you really, Ashin? <laughs> Do they get a tower, though? That's hey, they the got question. the red buff in two Do they get camps, a lot of damage right? onto <laughs> the tower? They got the red buff in two camps. Yes, yeah, so you know, point null and void. <laughs> <laughs> but... Back to what we were talking about in the early game of how the the, the, the hindering kind of setup from IG is Baolan. Baolan going in a little bit too hard. They lose a tower, Club and Chu. Okay. Let me put that they okay. lose a tower. And now it's an advantage to the side of Team WE. Yes, I agree that IG still looks strong, but Team WE are punishing them for their overextension. I will agree. I, I think IG's positioning inside the jungle was correct. It's just that Balan probably was a little bit too far forward when uh, the Shy had free reign over the tower. They, they definitely could have waited another five seconds, made sure they had that tower, and rotated. So, yeah, I agree with you. I was just trying to make the case that this is very Sorry. common for IG. <laughs> that they will do this a lot. Yes, you can make it. To, it it's common, but that does not make it yeah. good. And we can see, ooh, Jomong. Use his cleanse for absolutely no reason there. As you saw in the picture and picture huh. replay. That is a... Bit unfortunate, and uh, that's that's a piece of information that we'll hold for a later time if it becomes uh, relevant to the side of Team WE. But looking at the items and seeing how everything's kind of going down, again, it's still only a two and a half thousand gold lead for the side of IG. It hasn't gone anywhere. Dragging up in 50 seconds, Team WE need to fight at this one. Rookie is in position to try and you know catch somebody out. They need to be so so careful. Missing. Takes a little bit of a chunk, but he's now finally getting a bit of health bar onto his uh, onto his Alistar as he is picking up some items. And I want to see how this Mega Nar is actually going to work out in team fights. Uh, we have seen Nar do great things in lane, but because the tempo of this game uh, in the recent weeks has been so fast, we haven't really seen a good Mega Nar actually get a three-man push or three-man stun into the team fights. And this time again, the Shy actually loses most of his Nar bar before the contest actually comes up for Drake. Um, pretty interesting situation, and we do see Shanks actually. Oh, that was a, I think a spellbook heal that came out there, or just probably a, a, mm -hmm. a honey fruit or something. But a good a potential sleep that is coming through. Oh, two man sleep goes in, but missing tried to dissuade everyone from the side of IG. He will sacrifice his life. Solar Flare goes down on the Jomon, but he is not taken down just yet. There's the shotgun on the backside wing, trying to keep himself alive. He flashes away, and Jomon is dead. You see Shun just jumping on top of the Tristana. The shockwave can do nothing but delay the inevitable for Shanks. It's going to be four kills for the side of IG. They can turn towards the Baron, take that one. Beichang is going to try and sneak himself away, a dragon to stop the stack, but I think he's going to be rudely interrupted by the Shanks. The Shy has definitely seen this play before. He hops over, and there's no way that Beishan is going to come close to the pit. The Shy just has to play keep away. But he is the Shy. I, I can never really predict what he is going to do. Okay, good. At least he's not going to start that dra dragon by himself. Bala nearly dies to the Baron. Woo! <laughs> Speaking of nearly dying, Beishong has flash, might have to use it just here, is going to smite the oh, camp, and oh, ho, 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 ho! that is the reason you must fear and respect the Shy, he is going on to a double one more, kill, 2v1, and he's not dead, two, one more, two more, the Shy is going absolutely ham, no, he can't do it, no he can't, he has to back he's gonna himself get away, Sarex does get popped, 
I don't think he gets away from this one, one just hop, one yet, but he's trying his very, very best. One more hop should be able to do it. The auto attack comes in from Joe Moore. The Shy comes out in a 5v1 with two kills and the Al Infernal Soul going over to the side of IG. But IG are saying, you know what, Shy, we're going to respect your final wishes. We're going to make sure they cannot get a free reset. They look like they were looking for the kills, but damn, that's why you got to respect the, the Shy. The Shy was playing a 1v5 right there. That was not unnecessary. That was that was definitely uh, very much in favor of IG. They're able to secure the Drake after that one. And that's the Shy that we want to see. Super plays aggression but also lined up with what the rest of the team wants to do he goes in ham right there he sacrifices his life but it's for a great cause and that's the ig that won a championship so ig we know and love and again why does the shy play so aggressively because he can almost make the impossible possible he can almost turn a 1v5 and kind of you look at it and you're thinking in the back of your mind can he do it? Is this is this something he can get away with? As we have a look at how this fight goes out, and Shanks and Beishan getting clipped just to get the little thing lonely by off, just means that the start of this fight just separated for yeah, WWE. Yeah, WWE's frontline and backline are not really on the same page, and what we see right here is Mything and Breed both have to sacrifice their lives just to make sure their backline gets away, but unfortunately for them, Shun is just way too fed at this point. He has a Night Harvester, he has a 25% movement speed, incoming with every extra target he hits and he's able to clean up the back line too so just a complete destruction on we's part going into that team fight i must say rookie's positioning of the the balls from from syndra have just been immaculate just creating space where no space should be you know kind of contested it's just making it so that the side of team we have to triple guess where they're going from have to know exactly where he's positioned and where his balls are angled so they do not get caught out it is a hard game to play if you're on the side of team we but ig have just been forcing them to try and just you know triple guess themselves Definitely is the case. IG are playing with a lot of zone control, and if they hit someone, they can instantly follow up with Ballland's crowd control and just kill someone underneath their tower. So even with uh, Jomong, they have to play pretty safe. They're gonna have to give a lot of space to Rookie, and missing right here. I, I like this play. He holds on to his unbreaking will. He's not gonna go down just yet, and they do manage to clear the wave. So. You know, they are doing the best that they can to defend this, but the split push is also in for IG in the bottom side. Yeah, they've got themselves a 4-1 split. One in four in mid and one in bot side. You can see the, the, the distance they have to go for and missing tries to just make something happen. Solar Flare just zones off the rest of the team. And the rest of Team WWE can't follow him. He goes in alone and becomes a stake for the side of IG, who are now looking to pressure towards this bot side. They've got the minion wave. It's already down to a below two-thirds of its HP. And this is going to be the base cracked open for IG. Do they look for more? I think they do. Shin is just too damn good. He hit the swirl seed before missing came in, and Jomon was not able to follow up on this. So they just lose a member completely free for nothing, and IG are going to continue this push. I'm going to continue it, but back away. They do not want to get rid of the advantage they've already garnered. It can give a lot of gold should anyone fall on the side of IG to Team WE. A lot of bounties available on top of the Shy, Shun, and of course, Wink. And again, this is very, very reminiscent of how IG used to play back in 2018. Yes, it's still a very long season. Yes, we are still waiting to see if they can do this against, the, you know, the likes of Top Esports, the likes of... They did it against JDG, so we'll wait for that, and maybe RNG as well, the kind of current top teams. But overall, you gotta be happy looking at this. This feels like a, a, a throwback to a better time for IG fans. Yep, it's a draft that works. It's a, the shy that looks on point and isn't inting terribly hard. Yeah, just a little bit. And... Uh, a good jungle to fill the shoes of Ning, a great gaping hole that they left in that position. This feels like IG is going to be on point throughout the rest of the split. It's a great thing to see. And we also have to talk about how did teams actually counter IG when IG were at their prime. There actually weren't a lot of answers right there. And one of the few teams that were able to do it, we're looking at JD Gaming and we're looking at um, RNG. Those were the two teams that in IG's prime were still able to give them a good fight. And uh, the way they did that for RNG is they hard camped their bot lane. They made sure that they punished bot lane to the absolute maximum. 
They always level two gank the bot line, and Jackie Love kind of had a death wish at times too, so it wasn't all that hard. And plus, they had Uzi, but uh, <laughs> that, that seems like a lot of ifs. But that is one strategy we have seen teams trying to go for against IG, who look very good. But missing is going in for another oh. play. Missing is going in. He has the ball on top of him as well. They're trying to get on top of Wink, but with the Gale Force, it's just too damn hard. And Rookie trying to get as much as he possibly can. Wink picks up one kill. Shockwave does not really land on top of anybody. It's a three for two trade overall in fairness of IG. And they're still running Beishong down to his base. Four for two. And IG, they can just go for whatever way they want. They actually TP the shite out of the bot side. They want to try and end this game now. Lasagna's is just too much value coming in for IG. Rookie able to flash a across the wall, get a pick off, and then get out alive because of that Zanyas. A lot of great target switching for MyG, and they're gonna take this one down in dominant Invictus Gaming 2018 fashion. That was a win for IG. Team WE just could not get their hands on the game, and IG just kept pushing them back. Great to see from IG, and Overall, this is a solid, solid win for them. And the team that, look again, you have to always give credit to IG. They always look super, super solid in this.